So without further ado, guys, get the main man himself on. We're the one common denominator while we're in the room today. We all love him. The man, the myth, the legend. Give him one massive round of applause, Mr. Stephen Green! <laughs> How are we feeling? How's the uh, two days been? How many more tools have we got in the toolbox? Okay, so we're gonna, uh, we're gonna do a few things to wrap up. So I think that's a good place to start off with. So has everyone got a bit of pen and paper? Anyone not got some and want some? Raise your hand. Okay, put your hand up nice and high and the team will come round and give you some. I think there's one over there. Okay, what I want you to do is I want you, on your piece of paper now, I want you to imagine that toolbox that you came in with on day one, and I want you to think now of what are the tools that you've got. So in terms of different outlooks, maybe it's a different approach to something. Maybe it was a sentence that somebody said. One particular powerful moment for you. you the, the, there might have been one from each speaker. It might have been five particular ones from... Uh, just one speaker, but I want you to write them down. What other tools have you got in your toolbox to leave here with now? Okay, if you're still writing, that's fine. I'm going to ask for a couple of people to share some. So Dean's going to bring the mic over. Um, raise your hand. Tell me what other tool you've got in your toolbox, a different approach, something that you can take away from here. Okay, here we go. Oh, we've got one at the front as well. Tell us who you are and tell us what the new tool is, please. Uh, my name's Steve, and um, I realised from today it's uh, getting connected uh, with the right people um, to learn more about this. Good. Give him a round of applause. <laughs> Absolutely. Getting yourself around the right people will continue to shift your beliefs and um, lift the state that you're in. Hi, I'm Martin. Um, I was doing really well before I come here, but I was stuck in a comfortable zone. Yeah. Um, and this has shown me that if I want to show my kids how they can go above and beyond, I've got to push myself above and beyond. And uh, I was chatting with uh, Dean, and he said, uh, you've got to hang around people who are up bigger than you. Yeah. So it brings you up to them. So it's motivated me to push from what I thought was really good, but I, I felt stuck at really good to just 
go higher and uh, speaking to people and stuff like that has made me think I've got to push further so I can show the kids, you know, you can keep pushing as far as you want to push. I've got to show them by example. Good, that absolute leadership. Give him a round of applause. Let's have another two more. Hey, I'm Jake. Um, two parts, really. One, there's always a way. And two, what you don't know that guarantee you someone else does. Absolutely. So. Give them a round of applause. <laughs> They're two really valid points. Just let me touch on them. That There's always a way. There's always an answer, even if you don't know what it is. And if you don't know what it is, exactly like Jake said, somebody else will. So don't struggle alone. Somebody else will know the answer. It's just about getting it, tapping into other people. Let's have one more. Oh, we've got two here, so two hands up. We'll take these two. Hi, I'm Helen. Um, it was the eraser test that was a bombshell for me that Simran spoke about. Um, I've never heard that before, and it's just completely shifted in my mind, how I view my past and how I view my past self as well. And it's just given me a completely new perspective on life. And I, I would not want to erase anything at all about my past. And I've never felt like that before. Give it a big round of applause. Thanks, Helen. <laughs> just one sec on that one. Just hold on a sec, Dean. And this is, this is a very important point, what Helen's brought up, because that is the first time that I've heard that as well. Um, and I was sat there smiling because e even the things where I know I've cocked up in life, I still wouldn't erase any of them when I was that, that, that single thing because it's built me who I am today. So life's presented everything that you needed in exactly the right time in order for you to be where you are right now. Um, and no matter what those challenges are, You've got through them all because you, you're sat here and it doesn't matter if your challenges are, are small or you've had loads of success in your life and you're in a great place. Um, we still have challenges in life. It doesn't matter where you are. Like I said yesterday, your problems aren't going away. So it's about getting used to them. It's about reframing them. So yeah, great point. Thanks, Helen. Hi, my name's James and I'm 19. And I have like, no clue what I want to do in my life. And I think that Joe said when he was talking about the book, um, the regrets of dying people. It's like, you don't have any regrets in your life, so do as many things as you can think of or you have passions in, and then you'll know what you want to do. Absolutely, thanks for that. Give him a round of applause. <laughs> Scott, this is the only time that you're probably ever going to hear this in your life, but can we turn the air con off, please? There's a bit of a joke around that because I like the room to be 17 degrees. There's a reason why I want to warm it up a little bit. Okay, uh, I want to talk into uh, another couple of things. Some of which, a uh, couple of notes which uh, I've written down <coughs> from the last couple of days. Uh, one of the things which um, Simran said about change of direction. And um, I just want to add on that because this is a thing, guys. Your past does not equal your future. Your past does not equal your future. So no matter what's happened to you in your past, whether that's good or bad or whatever them limitations are, because we all have a limitation. So wherever the pinnacle of your results has been, that's the limit of, of your limitation, whether that's relationships, your fitness, your health, your best run time, the amount of money that you've made, We've all hit some sort of limit. And regardless of what those things are in the past, you can walk out of these doors the next hour and you can be whoever you want. You can have a blank canvas. Um, it was a little bit like what Ellie said. So I want you to learn that to, um, when you walk out there, to not give so much thought about what's happened in the past um, that's one thing I don't really care about too much. It's about where am I going? Um, I do look back briefly, and I don't know if it was Simran who said that or Joe, um, kind of looking back a little bit. I think it was Helen, actually. Um, looking back a little bit enough to get some information, but it's about where am I going forward? How am I going to move on? So I want you to just think of that. Um, 
Do you remember the cycler performance yesterday? Sean, is there a way, can you put, is that possible to put it back on the screen briefly? Can we do that? There we go, that was my magic, that wasn't it? Um, that was quick. Okay, so just looking at that from yesterday, a quick recap. You're all here because you want to change some results in your life. So the R's, the results. What was the, 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 the something controlling our results begins with an A, it is what? Actions, good. So we take a certain type of action, we get a certain type of result. The something though controlling our actions begins with a D. What is it? Decisions, good. So we're making decisions at all times that are impacting our actions, which impact our results. The something though impacting our decisions begin with an E, the R. Good, our emotions. So your emotions are impacting the decisions that you make. Something controlling our emotions, it begins with a T. What is it? Your thoughts, good. So your thoughts, who has the ability to control your thoughts? You do. So who's controlling your emotions? You are, whether you're conscious of that or unconscious. So when people say, I'm just having a really shitty day, it just means that you're not aware of the thoughts that are triggering that. It's as simple as that. That's all it means. We don't just have shitty days. Shitty days don't happen by chance. They don't. It's about where you put your focus. It's about where your thoughts are. So remember, I want you to get awareness of your thinking. So I want you to start thinking about where are my thoughts. So if we have a, an emotion that's maybe of anger or a feeling sad, uh, frustration, what's that question I said you need to ask yourself? Can anyone remember? No, was it a, a sleep ago? <laughs> what was it? Come on, someone raise the hand. Yeah, so what's the thought that I'm having right now that's creating this emotion? What's the thought that I'm having right now that's creating this emotion? Write that down, it's important. Because it just means where your focus is, that's all it's telling you guys. And like Dean said, um, he quoted a quote that I quoted of somebody else, um, which is Wayne Dyer. And Wayne Dyer says, change the way you look at things and the things you look at change. And all is that means is both of those things exist, but it depends on where you place your focus. It's like the Retka beacon that I give the example of yesterday. Some people complain that it's a rust bucket and some people look at all the nice LED lights around the outside of it and on a night time, it looks great. Both of those things exist, correct? But it depends on what your focus is on. Are you focusing on um, the little bit of rust that's on it? I've seen that bit of rust as well, but I tend not to see it because I'm too busy looking at the LED lights like when I was walking this morning in the dark. So both exist, it's about where you put your focus. And the great thing with this is, your life doesn't have to change in order for you to feel better. Only one thing needs to happen, and what's that? Your perception, exactly. So if you shift your perception, then instantly you will see a brighter world. It's as quick as that. This is not something where you need to go away from here and Go get a degree in it to feel happy. Happiness is a state. It's not a destination. It's not a place you get to. Do not fall into that trap because that's the trap that I fell into. Once I get to this certain amount of money and this amount of success, then everyone will have to worship me. I'll be at this amazing place and I'll be the king and I'll be a millionaire. And once I got there and I realized that nothing could change in my life at all, it was exactly the same as the day before. That's when I realized to stop looking outside, stop searching for material things, and maybe I needed to start looking a little bit closer at home within myself. So remember, it's not a destination. Happiness is not a destination. It's a state, and you have the ability to control that state. So... Um, there's something controlling our thoughts. It begins with a B. It is our beliefs. Good. 
our beliefs are our programs, they're what we're, we're operating on. Um, and then right at the very top, two words, what is it? Self-image. Self -image. So your self-image is what you believe about yourself. That's all it is. Your self-image is what you believe about you. And that is impacting the beliefs that we're susceptible to. Our beliefs, which are our programs, we're in a subconscious state for how much of the day? 90% of the day we're on autopilot. So we're not even aware about what we're thinking. We're not aware of, of the things that we're doing. Remember I said yesterday, you weren't aware of the pressure on your ass until I brought attention to it. You're now aware of it again. It was always there. You just didn't need to know that. So our mind's always deleting, distorting, and generalizing information. And then in the inner core of ourselves, we have our, our values. Good. So if you remember what I said was uh, when we get a good result, that feeds our self-image. So yesterday, after Ariana spoke on the stage, and obviously she uh, got her little poem. If, if you didn't understand, did anyone not understand what she was saying? So she did the serenity prayer. So it was, God grant me serenity to accept the things I cannot change. Courage to change the things I can and wisdom to know the difference. And I want you to just think about that. I want to say it again slowly because this is one of the biggest reasons why people create stress because the stress about things that they can't control. So God give me serenity to accept the things I cannot change. Courage to change the things I can. And wisdom to know the difference. And I want you to be able to put those into two uh, different sections, two different areas. Because the things we can't change, then what is the point of getting stressed out over it? It's out of our control. So it's about being able to go, that's the stuff I can't control, okay? Don't need to think about that. This is the stuff that I can control. Which is the most important thing? So which of these things here would have the biggest impact on my life if I was to work on that one area? And just chunk it down to just one thing. Remember what I said yesterday? I'm only working on one thing at a time. That's why I don't get stressed out. So it's about chunking things down. So Ariana spoke yesterday, four years old, came on the stage, um, obviously nailed it. Her ego's starting to form now, and you lot give her a massive round of applause. So the result is what? What type of result was it? A good one. A good one. So what do you think it done? So when she got home, she went, can I do that again tomorrow? <laughs> yeah. And then today, on the way to school, she's asking again, are you going back to that place? And I said, yeah. And she went, can I come again? So she wants to do it again. And the reason for that is good result is impacting the self-image. And then I reinforced that all night and today. Um, and I said, you were really good. You were very clever. Uh, you're very confident, aren't you? So what am I doing there? Beliefs, absolutely. I'm just feeding them beliefs constantly. And that's the reason why Sadie and Ariana are comfortable doing that stuff. Sadie's been doing that since she was nine. Um, and Ariana, that was the first introduction because I'm constantly feeding them things into the, into the mind because if we believe it, it becomes our truth. So it doesn't matter if it's true or not. Uh, if you think of Father Christmas, uh, I'm sure... Most of the room believed in, in the big guy at one point, and it controls our life. We live our li life a specific way and do certain things because of that belief, even though it was completely made up to us. So I just want you to be mindful about your beliefs, who you put yourself around, how you can impact them. Uh, something else I want to talk into is um, something which Joe mentioned. Um, and uh, I forget what, what he actually said. It was something around um, the questions he was asking. That was it on the board. Um, and I want you to just remember this. I want you to write this down. So I want you to write this down. That the quality of my life 
So the quality of my life will be in direct proportion to the quality of question I ask myself. So the quality of my life will be in direct proportion to the quality of question I ask myself. So stop asking why me? And start asking more questions of how do I move from A to B? How do I get from there to there? Who do I need to put myself around? How do I get smarter? What do I learn from this situation no matter how shitty it is? It's a different type of question. Can you see that? So I want you to be very mindful of the questions that you're asking yourself. Very mindful. If you notice any why me questions, what are you doing? You're playing the victim, exactly. And if you play the victim, you're putting the blame outside of yourself. And if you put the blame outside of yourself, you can no longer control it. There's nothing you can do about it. We can only control the things we take 100% responsibility for. So I want you to be mindful of that. Ask yourself a better quality question, okay? I am, uh, the I am, so as part of the discipline model. For those that have done the property training with me will know that each of these letters stand for a very specific thing, the, the 10 steps to success. Uh, and the first I, the second I, sorry, is I am. And what I mean by I am is our identity of what language do you use? What language do you use? Because whatever you follow those words with, uh, I don't know if it was uh, Jesson who, who, who said that yesterday. It might have been Carl. I think it was Carl, actually. Um, so the I am, I want you to be mindful of that language that you use. Because if you use any language like, I am slipping back again, or I am feeling this way, once it becomes part of your identity, then you will live it out. Think of the cycle of performance. If you own it at an identity level, then what does it become? It's a belief. And if it's a belief, it's going to control your what? Thoughts. And if it's a thought, it's going to control your emotions. Exactly. So be very mindful of the language that you use. And you can change your language instantly. So... Um, we all have days that are challenging. It doesn't matter who you are. I have days that are challenging. I have some days that are better than other days. Um, I'm gener generally in a very high state. I'm, I'm generally very uh, uh, happy, uh, not very stressed. But would I agree that we have more challenging days than others? Absolutely. But just remember that they're the opportunities to grow. They're the opportunities to learn. So in any situation moving forward, no matter how much life pulls the rug from underneath of you, ask the question, what is the opportunity to grow from this? What is the lesson? What is the lesson in this situation? Because there always is one. And if you can take that lesson, you'll constantly move forward. Remember, that's what I, I, I'm open about that, guys. Um, in terms of being at school, we've had a lot of smart people up here the last couple of days um, that have done degrees and they've got these great qualifications. And I admit that I didn't even go collect my school grades. I didn't even go get them. So there's nothing smart about me. I was brought up in a council house. I was brought, I was from a split uh, family. Parents split up at a young age and I was brought up by my grandparents in a council house, had no money. I was very sick as a child. So I haven't had any advantage. The only thing that I do is I'm consistent. I know where it is I'm going. I work on myself daily. I get very honest with myself of how have I shown up? What's the learn? And I just keep moving forward, just one step at a time, tortoise and the hare. 
That's all I'm doing. There's nothing at all special about me. I'm not uh, particularly intelligent. I make my own words up. There's probably half of the words over the last two days you thought, what's that word? I've never heard of that before. It's because I fucking made it up. <laughs> it wasn't you with your lack of knowledge. Um, I just know how to move forward, guys. And I don't take life too seriously. I'm, I'm not too arse. Things, things happen. Um, last night, um, we had a flood in one of our apartments. Um, and my reply to Scott was, Scott might read it out to you. Um, do you want to read it, Scott? So bearing in mind, this is one of our brand new apartments. We've got a burst pipe um, and it's completely fucked. The whole apartment's fucked. So this was um, around one o'clock this morning. I was alerted about half past two. Um, Josh and the team were looking after it. And I just passed on the message, obviously, from, <coughs> from Stephen and the, Josh and the team. And Stephen just replied. My long-winded was, I've had a leak in apartment one. There's water pissing down everywhere. Obviously, Josh is on it. Baz is fixing it. We've moved the resident out from that apartment to the next one. Um, hope all is well. I'll catch you later. He replied and said, Challenges, smiley face, monkey with hands over the eyes. Cheers, Scott. Have a good day. <laughs> There's no, it's fucking happened, hasn't it? What's the point in stressing over it? It's already fucking happened. There's no point. It doesn't bother me. There's nothing I can do about that. Serenity prayer. God give me serenity to accept the things I cannot change. I can't change it. Courage to change the things I can. So the courage to change the things I can. Scott's already told me in the message that they're on it. It's being sorted. That's it. I don't even give it another... S I don't go into that thing of, oh, shit, that's 10 grand, or we've now lost this, we've lost that. I'm, I'm already moving to the next thing. If you're creating enough opportunities, it, you don't worry about the few shitty things behind you because you're too busy moving forward. So let go of life a bit. Let go a bit. Um, that's why I put the post on the other day. Like Gemma said to me, oh my God, I can't believe like, I know you're transparent, but that was probably a bit too transparent. I just don't take life that serious, guys. I pooed my pants. Fucking it's not a big deal. Yeah. We can laugh about it. You can laugh at me. I'm all right about it. It's all right. It's all right. I'm cool with it. So... Things happen. Just let go a little bit. Let go. Um, and what you'll find is when you let go, you'll start to swim with life. You'll start to swim with the stream rather than against it. It'll stop feeling like it's a struggle. It'll stop feeling like you're swimming against the current. Just let go a bit. You're not going to die. Somebody wrote the other day on one of my things that you've posted a, a thing about my mortgage statement and he had my name and address and people were commenting on there. Oh my God, people are going to see where you live and stuff like that. And I went, they can't make me pregnant. <laughs> that was my reply. It's not a big deal. Okay, you know where my house is now. I'm not that arsed. So the point I'm making, guys, is just let go of it because no matter what life has thrown to you, and here's something for you to know. If you've had something very traumatic or something what would be deemed pretty bad to happen to you, more so than other people, you're still fucking sat in the room. You've still dealt with it. You've still got over it. You've still managed it. You're still here. It still didn't manage to take you down because you're stronger than it. And what it gives you now is a strength that other people don't have. So the bigger your challenge, the bigger your strength. Bring it on. Throw the challenges at me. That's what I'd say. Okay, I want to wrap up with um, uh, a couple of little things. I'm going to read some out to you. Um, I'm going to read some out to you in a minute. I just want you to think of uh, this thing first. So there's three things that uh, are impacting our emotions. So your emotions just state how you feel. So if you maybe uh, have a day where um, you're feeling a little bit crappy or whatever, there's three things that can shift your emotions. One of those is your physiology, so your body language. So if you're maybe feeling a little bit 
lethargic, you're procrastinating, you're putting things off and you're not moving forward and you feel a little bit crappy because you know you should have cut the grass or you know you should have done that particular thing and you haven't now done it um, and you're feeling a little bit crappy from it, then changing your body language. Your body language is important, so I want you to think about it. There's a little thing that I do on my three-day training, and I want you to just listen to this. Whew. I'm really looking forward to the next hour with you. Look. What did I say? Just tell me what I said, nothing else. Yeah, well, just, just tell me what I said. What did I say? I'm really looking forward to teaching you the next hour. Why did you not believe it? Body language. And as Natalie said, um, it was a positive thing in a negative way. Why was it negative? Yeah, it was the tonality. So tonality and body language are far more important than the language what you actually say. So what I want you to think about is how you hold yourself. When you walk out of these doors, walk in a different way. Start being that person that's positive. Bring your shoulders back. Put your head up. Have a look around you. Rather than looking at the floor and that, that'll bring out that state of the poor old me, you reflected on that. Get your head up. Get your shoulders back and fucking enjoy the beauty that's out there. Watch what it does differently for your emotions. Just that one thing alone. So body language. Uh, the second thing is uh, your focus. So where your thoughts are. Remember the cycle of performance? Your thoughts are controlling your uh, emotions. So whatever you're focusing on. And we have the ability to do this naturally without even realizing it. So what do we do with a baby that's crying? If a baby's crying at a very young age, what do we do? What's one of the things that we... Uh, might cuddle it. What else? Feed it. Feed it. So if we've fed it, done its bum, we've done all the basics and that hasn't worked, what do we attempt to do? Comfort through what? Yeah, okay, you've done all of the comfort things. Distraction. So raise your hands if you can resonate with this. Raise your hands if you've had young children or had them in your family, brothers, sisters or something of Adam. Raise your hands. And you've had that young child... And you've either been in a room and witnessed this or you've done it yourself where you've had that child and you've went, hey, look, look at the keys. And you start rattling the keys or you get a rattle out or something like that or you start crumpling the paper and make noises. Raise your hands if you've done that or seen it. Look around the room, keep your hands up. Look at that. And what we're doing naturally, guys, is we're, do, we're distracting. We're shifting focus. So what we wanted to do is get that child off from thinking about that particular thing and create a bit of a distraction. So we do it without even realizing it. It's built into us. So shifting um, your focus. So number one, your physiology. Change your body language. Get up. Do some knees to the chest, some press-ups, sprints, whatever it is. Shift your body a little bit. Uh, number two, shifting your focus. Number three is belief shift which is a more permanent one. So shifting focus can be done at really rapid, um, but won't particularly last that long. Physiology change in your body, uh, what you do, that will work rapidly, but particularly won't last that long because your emotions change. Or the third one is our beliefs. So you can change beliefs very quickly, um, but they have to happen through something, either some advice or what somebody says to you, or through an experience, so internally or externally. And when you shift a belief, it becomes permanent until that belief is changed again. So I want you to think of those three things of how to shift the emotion. Okay. Uh, so what I'd like you to do, um, I'm going to read something out to you. And then um, the, the meditation that Helen done, raise your hands if that's the first time if you've been exposed to a bit of guided meditation. Okay, most of you. So I'm going to do 
um, a form of guided meditation with a light hypnosis in it. So I'm going to take you to a really relaxed place. Um, but first of all, I'm going to read something out to you. So uh, what I'd like you to do is just get comfy in your chair. Before we do that, um, Dean talks about event plus response equals outcome. I forgot to leave my daughter my key, so let's answer the phone. <laughs> hiya, babes. Dad, I'm locked outside the house. Oh, are you? Oh, I must have forgot the key. Why don't you come to the Olympia? Because I'm going out. All oh, right. I don't have the key. It's here on me. I'm sorry, babes. Uh, is, the, is the gym door open? Uh, no. Nope. All right. Do you want to come here, then? Okay, then. See you in a bit. All right. Bye. Bye. Event plus response equals outcome. Uh, can we just... Uh, in fact, no, for this one we won't. We'll just uh, get, get a little bit relaxed. I want to read something out to you. You've probably heard this, and you might have seen it on Facebook or one of the social media platforms. Uh, it was something that I seen probably about five, six years ago now, um, and, and it just hit me quite hard, um, and that's why uh, I've kept it. So what I'd like you to do is just close your eyes. I'm going to read something out to you. Two men, both are seriously ill. They occupy the same hospital room. One man was allowed to sit up in his bed for an hour each afternoon to help drain the fluid from his lungs. His bed was next to the room's only window. The other man had to spend all his time flat on his back. Then talked. they talked for hours on end to each other. They spoke of their wives and families, their homes, their jobs, their involvement in the military service where they had been on vacation, general chat each day. Every afternoon when the man in the bed by the window could sit up, he would pass the time by describing to his roommate all the things he could see outside of the window. The man in the other bed began to live for those one-hour periods where his world would be broadened and enlivened by all the activity and colour of the outside world. The window overlooked a park with a lovely lake. Ducks and swans played on the water while the children sailed their model boats. Young lovers walked arm in arm. Beautiful colours sounds of the birds in the distance, the skyline. He described it all in great detail. The man in the other bed would close his eyes and imagine all of these things as his roommate explained them. One warm afternoon, the man by the window described a parade passing by. Although the other man could not hear the band, he could see it in his mind's eye as the gentleman by the window portrayed with descriptive words. Days, weeks and months passed by. One morning the day nurse arrived to bring water for their baths, only to find the lifeless body of the man by the window, who had died peacefully in his sleep. She was saddened and called the hospital attendants to take the body away. As soon as it seemed appropriate, the other man asked if he could be moved next to the window. The nurse was happy to make the switch, and after making sure he was comfortable, she left him alone. Slowly, painfully, he propped himself up on one elbow to take his first look at the real outside world. He strained to slowly turn to look out the window beside the bed, and it faced a blank wall. The man asked the nurse, what could have compelled his deceased roommate, who had described such wonderful things outside the window, to lie to him? 
The nurse responded that the man was blind and could not even see the wall. She said, perhaps he just wanted to encourage you. And here's the thing. There's tremendous happiness in making others happy, despite our own situations. Shared grief is half the sorrow, but happiness when shared is doubled. If you want to feel rich, just count all the things you have that money can't buy. Today is a gift. That is why it's called the present. The presence. Okay, open your eyes. I just find that quite powerful.